And then, of course, you know, he, he retires because of the bullshit. But then before that, he meets Charles Barkley in the in the finals. Love this. Love this entire just storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not even a storyline. This actually happened in real life. <laughs> but I just love how everything kind of panned out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's amazing. Yes. Uh, one of the things I took notes on was after the finals when um, uh, people were talking to Charles Barkley about, like, how did he... How did he feel? It was like not. It was. It was sorry. It wasn't right after the game. It was like an interview with Charles Barkley, and people were asking like, "How did you feel about losing in the finals?" And he was like, "I lost to the best." Like I like he was like, I, "I'm never comfortable losing." He was like, "But I lost. I lost to the best." Yeah. And I wonder if that's the switch, or that's like the the pervasive the pervasive like viewpoint or opinion that guys like him and Carl Malone and John Stockton and Pat and all those guys that lost to MJ in the 90s because there was a lot of greats that did and Reggie and Alonzo Mourning and Tim Hardaway. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that's what they take away from the 90s and playing basketball in such a iconic era. I lost to the best. I'm cool with that. I'm super. Like, I I'm think you gotta cool. be, Rick. I, I think got, you gotta be, right? You gotta be cool with that. Like, like I think if I'm in the 90s and I played and I'm Reggie and I'm one of these Hall of Flamers, like, Ain't no discredit to my game and what I did and my impact on the league and my team and my community. But there was somebody during the time that I was around that was a stone cold killer. He was just, he was the best. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 that's, I respect Charles for saying that. And it goes back to like watching grown men really just be like, yo. Nah, Charles is dick riding. (laughs) Yeah, hats off to him. And one thing I definitely got Uh from this entire Sun series is that Draymond could never. <laughs> Draymond could never. I think that the timing was so perfect because last week Draymond was talking all this shit about how Charles da 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 and how Draymond's impact was th- yeah okay cool, but you couldn't do what Charles was doing. Draymond could not go out and give you fifty four uh, facing elimination. You can't. You can't do that. You know. Um. You know how we say like great players could just uh, translate in any era. There's no way Draymond. <laughs> Who is Draymond in the 90s? Oh, man. He is a bench. He rides the pine. He's he's a bench warmer. He doesn't make the league. He, I I think he does. There are a lot of. Off of what skill? Actually, no, he doesn't. Because he's not even, he's not even big enough to be those big men that didn't really have a lot of skill, but they were just big. Right. Like, there were a lot of those guys in the 90s. Yeah, it was a mad. But. uh, You still see them now. They look like their knees hurt. Like, wide. Like tall dudes that I've been seeing like, dudes like took in up a, space. Yeah, in the in the grocery store, and I'm like, he used to be in the league back <laughs> in the nineties. I could tell. Tell by the walk. You could yeah, tell by you that. Can tell by the walk. You could no, tell by no, the walk. No, not a, not, never. A, not a huge knock against him, but he's he's nothing in the nineties. Who's he guarding? He's not guarding. He's not staying in front of Chuck. He's not saying what Chuck. Chuck had moves. What? And so Chuck many shoot, moves. And Chuck shooting over his little ass. So many moves. He's not guarding Chuck. He's not guarding Carmelo. He's not guarding Pat. Who is he? He's not. No, he's not guarding anybody. Yeah, no. Really? No. Who does he guard now? Uh, he kind of like does like a, a floaty zone. Exactly. It's not a this this is not a one on one league. Yeah, this is not a I'll shut you down league. Even though yeah. Gary Payton was talking the shit he was talking, Gary Payton will go one on one with you and pick you up full court. That was a regular thing. Yeah. Up up against anybody and give you problems. That is not a that's not a thing now. So even Draymond touting this, I'm the, I'm this great screen setter, I'm this great defender, I'm this and that. But you you ain't what you are shitting on right now. Yeah, no, he he has no respect, lack of respect. But I had uh, I I got a newfound love for Ch- for Chuck and just like just his competitive spirit. Um, I thought I thought it was dope. I thought it was dope. But that Jordan switch though, I always had that. I love Chuck. I, I always loved his game and just his uh, his perspective on things. He was very. Um, very down to earth with a lot of his comments and a lot of the ways that he felt about certain kept shit. It, he kept it thorough. Kept thorough. it very real, very thorough. Absolutely. Uh, one one other thing, uh, one of the last few things I wanted to touch on, the rise and fall narrative. Now, it is a thing where in society we see a rising star, a star reaches his peak, he falls so dramatically, and then we get to tell that story, right? And one of the biggest things in that Uh, that last episode was the press, they latched on to a lot of these issues that MJ uh, was going through at this point in time, like right before the 93 playoffs. And they really felt like it was their opportunity to 
captivate the fall. Like they had narrated and documented the rise. And now it's every single reporter or writer like trying to be first and trying to like write the best piece, like the Jordan rules, like write the best piece on the fall of Michael Jordan. It's, it's just how we're wired as people. We want entertainment. We want a good story. We want, we want a, we want a hero when he faces adversity and that adversity could either make or break them Mm -hmm. or exposes them and their character really isn't as pure as we thought it was. And they actually secretly cheat on their wives or da 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 da. Like we seen it just last week, a little tweet popped up about LeBron possibly cheating on his wife. And it's like, it's just people it's it's very malicious, but it's the world the world we live in is just people are waiting for you to mess up. You you brought up a really good point, and I really respect it. It's just that it comes with the territory. Yes. As as a person, and this this is the like you want to be great. This is what comes with it. 